Now what? Plug it into the HH equation. And it doesn't matter uh, to changing it back to the concentration because it's in the same volume that you can't slide. That's right. Okay. If you were worried about that, you could be there on the safe side and put them into concentrations, but we don't need to do that. So what do we plug in for our pKa? Uh, 3.37. Remember, that doesn't change. Now what's the concentration of the base? Well, it's the amount of the base divided by the new volume. And what's going to be the concentration of the acid? It's the amount of the acid divided by the new volume. But as we were talking about a minute ago, it would be a waste of time to actually figure out the new volumes and do the calculation, because you can see these two Vs are going to cancel anyway. So we can save ourselves some time by canceling these. What would be the new volume? I guess it would be uh, 1.02 1 .0, 1 .0 liters. But there's no point. It, um, you would just end up dividing both the top and the bottom by 1.02. Well, if you divide both the top and the bottom of a fraction by the same thing, it doesn't change. So that was another reason why working with moles was a convenient thing to do here. Let's see if our estimate was right. So I ended up with a pH of 3.7, which really was not a very big change. So our estimate of 4 was right. Sure. Let's just see what, what, we, uh, what we got from this. So again, you want to watch for these situations where you have both the acid and the base. You're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbach. And we also saw what to do if you add a strong acid or base to the buffer. So then you have to use the start change end table. But then you still use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation after that. So this was a more complicated type of uh, problem. And again, the thing that's frustrating here is that you don't want to get this confused with other situations in acid base. There's just a whole bunch of different cases, and it's hard to keep them all straight in your mind. Sorry, so when do we know to use the icebox? You pretty much always use the icebox, except um, when all you have is the weak acid and the weak base. If all you have is a weak acid and a weak base, you can just go straight to the henderson hasselbach equation as a shortcut. Um, anything else, you're going to probably need the start change end table. In this case, we had both the weak acid and the weak base and another strong base. So first of all, we used the ice table. But notice, after we used the ice table, what did we end up with? We ended up with a strong, uh, we ended up with the weak acid and the weak base. So now we have a whole new problem. Now we have a new problem where we have a weak acid and a weak base, and we know for that, we use the henderson hasselbach equation. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.